Hello everyone, my name is Jason Gregerson, and this video is going to be Introduction to Vector Equations. In this video, we have three main goals. First, we want to find out what is a vector. Next, we want to talk about how to do vector operations. Specifically, we're going to learn how to add, subtract, and multiply vectors by scalars. Lastly, we want to talk about the geometric interpretations of these vector operations. So, what is a vector? It's a mathematical term, a quantity represented by an arrow with both direction and magnitude. Vector! That's me, because I'm committing crimes with both direction and magnitude. Oh yeah! So as we just saw, one way to think about vectors, or to represent vectors, is as an object with direction and magnitude. And often we denote this object using an arrow. But there are many other ways we can think about or represent vectors. The second one listed here is as an ordered list of numbers. So for instance, I could create a list, the list 1, 2, and this would be called a vector. And this will also define vectors in Mathematica using curly brackets as a list of numbers. I then might want to talk about the set of all lists of two numbers. For instance, that set would include not only 1, 2, but also 1, 3, and also 1, 3.468, for instance. These would all be lists of two elements. I've looked at the entire set of lists of two elements. I'm going to call that set R2, where R is a set of real numbers, and so each one of these numbers that I'm putting in my list is a real number, and 2 talks about the length of the list. These are lists of two numbers. So then I would use this symbol. This symbol means belongs to, it says the vector 1, 2 belongs to the set R2. Similarly, I could say that 1, 2, 3, this vector, this list of three numbers, belongs to the set R3. In fact, in general, I could say if I gather up n different numbers, a list of n numbers, it belongs to the set Rn. Rn would be the set of all lists of n numbers. Now the third way we can represent or think about vectors is we can say that an m by 1 matrix is a column vector. So if I think about a matrix with just one column, so for instance this column, that would be a column vector. I can think of that also as a list of two numbers, just vertical instead of horizontal. And similarly I could take the vector 1, 2, 3. So the last way to think about vectors is as an element of a vector space. And this is kind of reversing the role that we've looked at so far. So far we've talked about lists of numbers and how they are elements of R2. But the way we're going to generalize this in the future is we're going to first start with some collection of stuff. We're going to justify calling this stuff a vector space. And then all the elements inside of it are going to be our vectors. Once again, we'll talk more about this later. So now that we've introduced what vectors are, let's learn about some vector operations. So for example, if I have two vectors, u and v, so u is the vector 1, 2, v is the vector 3, 1, I want to learn how to do some operations. I want to learn how to add two vectors. So u plus v, that's this vector 1, 2, plus the vector 3, 1. And to add those vectors, the way I'm going to define addition in Rn is just to add these comp component-wise, add their components. So I add their first components together, and I add their second components together. And the result here will be the vector 4, 3. When I subtract two vectors, once again, I just subtract their components. So 1, 2 minus the vector 3, 1 will result in the vector negative 2, 1. When I multiply a vector, by a scalar, just by a number value, 2 times the vector u. This looks like 2 times that vector 1, 2. I multiply each of the components by that scalar quantity. So the result here will be 2, 4. And lastly, if I know how to multiply vectors by scalars, and I know how to add vectors together, I can combine those two operations and look at something like this. And later we're going to define this as a linear combination of u and v. This is written as 2 times that first vector plus 3 times that second vector 
And I'll do the multiplication first to get the vector 2, 4, plus the vector 9, 3. And then I'll add them to get the vector 11, 7. So now I can do all those vector operations. But now I want to find out what these vector operations mean graphically. So to do this, we're going to think about the two-dimensional coordinate system. So here I have the two-dimensional coordinate system. Since this coordinate system is really the set of all points, and each point I can express as, for instance, if I look at the point 1, 2, as a list of two values. And so I can associate each point with the arrow from the origin to that point. So here is my point 1, 2. I'm going to draw an arrow from the origin to that point. And this is how I'm going to represent the vector u, the vector 1, 2. And so I can see that the set of all lists of two numbers is the same as the set of all points in the two-dimensional coordinate system. So that would be the visual representation of the vector 1, 2. To represent the vector 3, 1, I go over to 3, 1 and draw that arrow. And now I want to talk about my vector operations. Specifically, I want to talk about vector addition. When I added those two vectors together, I got the vector 4, 3. And if I plot that vector 4, 3, it looks something like this. This would be the vector 4, 3. Now that process of vector addition just had me add the x components and add the y components, or add the first and second components together to get my resulting vector. And visually we can think about that as traveling in the direction of one vector, 1, 2, to get to this tip of this vector, and then from here following the activity of the second vector. So going over 3 and up 1 from that second vector. One way we can visualize that is by putting those two vectors tip to tail. So if I could take this vector and move it tip to tail with the other vector, I can see that where I would end up is exactly the tip of the sum of the two vectors. That's one visual representation. Now the other visual representation, if I connect all these tips together, I create a parallelogram. And the sum of the two vectors is exactly the diagonal of that parallelogram. So this is the way we can graphically represent vector addition in the two-dimensional coordinate system. Now what about scalar multiplication? When I took two times the vector u, I got the vector 2, 4. If I plot that vector 2, 4, it will look something like this. It looks like these two vectors point in the same direction. The second vector, 2, 4, is just longer than the first vector. And that's exactly what happens here. When I multiply the vector u by 2, I'm really just doubling the length of the vector. So when I multiply a vector times a scalar, I'm just scaling that vector. I'm stretching it or shrinking it. Now what happens if I multiply it by a negative value? If I looked at u times negative 2, well, this would be negative 2 times the vector 1, 2, which would be equal to negative 2, negative 4. And if I plotted that, let me write down here, and I can see that that's just pointing in the opposite direction. But once again, it would have a length that's twice as long as the vector u. So we've seen here how to add, subtract, and multiply by vectors by scalar. We've also seen the visual representations of these operations. That concludes this video on vectors.